Hello, everyone. Welcome. On day, on day, Babon. On day, on day, Babon. No, I don't. Oh. Awesome. Uh, let's see. I see we have still we have people still logging in. Um, I'm going to give everyone five minutes and see who else joins us, and then we can get started. All right, awesome. Um, let's see. So we'll go ahead and get started. I went ahead and pressed record. Um, to get us started, uh, let's see. Uh, Grandma D, they uh, dots. I right, you're muted. Okay, go ahead. God don't get all day. Hey, Mohamo. I'm Tom Pedro. Get up, stay on day on the day. Get on the dog. Good dog, get me in dog. Tom, do the anger. Thought the key I got dog. I get on the get on the dog. I ate the saddle. Your court was on each other, or they on the on the key. And you know, my heart get all the better, a whole day by whole. I can't pay the dots out the a whole. A whole. A whole. Awesome. Um, okay, so we have uh, for our mentor this evening, we have Grandma D. And then for our learners, we have Tim, Kathy, Lori, Aunt Carolyn, and Ramon. And I did get a message uh, from Miss Brenda. She said she would try to join. Um, Courtney also messaged and said that they are driving and she doesn't know if she'll be able to join, but if she does, she'll be a little late. And then Judy is traveling. They're out of, out of town. Um, so that's what I know. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to, you know, we want to try to focus uh, this summer um, for the next like 12 weeks or so. Um, preparing for the uh, next round of um, Kiowa language credentialing. Um, and we really wanted to also uh, continue to practice um, the different um, additional aspects of the Kiowa language credentialing process um, to make sure that everyone has support in, um, you know, getting through and making sure they're able to complete all of the components of credentialing. So um, that's kind of what we wanted to do. And so in these sessions on Wednesdays uh, for the summer, preparing for August, we um, want to um, continue some of the conversational practice, but we also want to use breakout rooms in Zoom to um, be able to practice. Uh, we want to look at the study stats and uh, practice the kinship terms. We know that we want to practice the Kiowa grammar, so like the nouns, pronouns, and verbs. Um, and then we also want to practice uh, like reading out loud, because, you know, we 
part of the level two credentialing is to read um, a Kiowa story um, and to be able to read it, you know, and sound like the speaker that's in the recording. Um, so that's pronunciation, reading, a read aloud practice. So we want to do that. And there's also a, a component for level one and for level two where you have to um, revoice or record your own voice on the PowerPoints um, that are used for level one and level two. Um, so um, those are kind of some of the things that we had talked about a couple weeks ago when we were kind of brainstorming. Um, does that sound, um, how's that sound to everyone? Does that sound like it would be useful to all of you or does anyone have any other ideas or things that we need to cover? I think that's, uh, Melody, I think that's really a good plan. Here's one of my concerns uh, with the um, breakout rooms is that they don't get recorded and so you're not able to see those. And so I don't know if there's some way we can either like rotate the uh, the um, lessons in the main the main one here, you know, to where that way that the, uh, if it's if it's going over the, the kinship, you know, it's getting recorded and so then we that are learning can able to go back and listen to the recording somehow like that where the, the teachers are rotating in the main room or something like that i don't know yeah i definitely um appreciate that yeah that is a challenge um so it is possible to record the breakout rooms but it requires like some extra steps and i would have to go in and like click on the record um so I think maybe we'd be better off like rotating the topics in the main room so that we can record. And then I know that um, on the weeks that Dane is available, he wants to be able to join to help support anyone that has questions specifically about credentialing. Um, he wants to be able to have a breakout room to have like some one-on-one -on -one discussions or, you know, for people to just kind of um, get more information or ask for, you know, some additional support. Uh, so as long as everyone's okay with like the breakout rooms not being recorded, um, you know, I'm fine with opening breakout rooms if people want to like have that time to focus on, you know, whatever you'd like to focus on. Um, but yes, I think we should rotate the topics here in this room so that we can have a recording of, you know, what we want to focus on. that makes sense? Yeah, I think it'll work this evening because there's just a few of us. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. Um, there's not a large group. Um, let's see. I do know that Dane had said when he's able to join, he does want to have like a breakout room just to have like one-on-one -on -one conversation with people. Um, so, but he, I don't, think he's joining I think he's out of town this week so we'll probably have him next week uh let's see were there any other questions or comments okay um let me I'm going to share my screen and bring up the uh google drive let me find the right spot before I share it. Um, so we can look at the credentialing folder. Okay, uh, and I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, pull it up so that we can kind of see how to find the credentialing folder. Um, I know that's been uh, useful in the past. Okay. All right, here is the folder. Let me know when you can see my screen. We see share with me. Okay, <laughs> awesome. So to find the uh, credentialing folder, I go to the shared with me. Um, so you'll see the my drive and then I go to the shared with me. And then I just scroll down until I, usually it goes like in um, chronological order. So I scroll down till I find the credentialing folder, which is like way down there. 
because I have like tons of pictures and stuff. Uh, let's see, where is it? Uh, somewhere here, maybe. Maybe I passed it. No, that's not it. Okay. So if you can't find it, this is what I do. <laughs> I just look for Kyle credentialing. Um, and now I'll look for the folder. I have just so many files on this. It's um, pretty, pretty crazy. I'm trying to remember the name of it. Oh, I think it's called credentialing study material. Maybe there it is. Okay, so the folder is credentialing study material for future reference. And all of you should have access to it already. So let me know if you don't have access and then we can email Dane and have him uh, give you access. Okay, so let me. Um, so here's the folders. So portion A is the conversation part, which is pretty much what we did all spring to practice for the um, in person interviews. Um, I believe in August, they're trying to do another round of in person interviews and um, I think Dane mentioned that they want to do something about like use, doing a virtual session also, but that's something that we'll have to ask the Kiowa Language Credentialing Board to give us some updates in one of our sessions here, um, one of these weeks. Uh, so these are just the, con the PowerPoints that we've been using, um, which our lessons are based on, the ones from this spring. So I'm going to go back out of that. So the next part is the grammar, the nouns, pronouns, and verbs, um, which I thought, I thought there was a level two in here, but maybe Dane's still working on that. Uh, pronunciation is the other part. So pronunciation has the level two here. So, you'll, so if you're level two, if you're already level one, you'll you'll go to the level two folder. If you're going for level one, uh, you'll go to the level one folder. Um, so this one is basically for level one. Um, you're going to download this PowerPoint and see it pulls it up in Google Slides, but you can't hear the recordings. So um, you always want to download. So I go to download and download as Microsoft PowerPoint. So now it'll download it to a computer. I'm going to exit out of that. Um, but you have to have Microsoft PowerPoint um, to be able to hear the recordings in the PowerPoint. And then what you're going to do for level one is you're going to revoice. So you're going to re record your own voice. Um, for each of those little um, audio clips in the PowerPoint. Um, and then you can submit it. So this folder here that says submissions for level one, um, this is where uh, several of us have submitted our pronunciation recordings uh, so that Dane and the language board can review them and give us feedback. Um, let's see this. I think this was a uh, was this another resource. Yeah, this was a pronunciation resource. Um, okay, let's go back. Okay, so so for level one, that's for the um, pronunciation. Is you just have to download this PowerPoint. And then revoice it, re record yourself saying those things in the PowerPoint. And then submit it to Dane. You can email it, you can upload it here. Make sure you put your name in it somewhere. And then um, email or text Dane and let him know that you submitted it so he can review it. And then if uh, it's ready to go, he'll um, give you feedback and then 
get it to the uh, language board for them to review and evaluate. For level two, we're going to choose either one of the stories in this folder, and there's recordings there, or two of the stories in the Miss Gonzalez folder here. You have the recordings that correspond to each of these documents. And because these are kind of shorter, that's why you need to uh, have two of them. And then, um, if you want to do one of these stories, uh, then the corresponding recording is included here. So you would basically need to record yourself reading the story and try to match the speaker's fluency in the recording. That's our goal for these. So for level two, you'll pick either one of these or two of these, and then you'll submit those to Dane. And for level two, you also have to revoice the conversational phrases in this PowerPoint. So this is again, it's gonna look familiar because it's um, similar to the PowerPoint we used to develop our lessons for the spring. Um, so if you practiced all of those uh, for the um, May in-person credentialing, the conversation interviews, you'll already know a lot of these. And so you'll just download this as a PowerPoint and you're gonna record yourself saying these things. So you would delete the recording that's in there and then well, you can listen to it obviously, um, but then record yourself saying these things. Um, and you'll just uh, complete the whole PowerPoint. It's quite a lot, but it is level two. Um, so, I think I'm like halfway through with my recordings. I still have to finish recording the other half. I think I got to like lesson 10 or 11. Um, so there's two parts to level two um, pronunciation, this portion C. So for level two, you gotta do two things, read one of these stories and revoice those conversation in the PowerPoint. And then submit them to Dane so he can get them to the language board. Um, okay. Then the next part of, so I'm gonna go to study stacks here in a minute to uh, to do the, the um, I think level, level one grammar is in here but level two and level one, they're in the study stacks, which we can use that to study. Um, okay, but let me go back. Then you have the fourth thing, which is uh, kinship, family charts. Um, these are like the full charts, which kind of can be confusing. So we found that the easier way to study is to use the study stacks. Um, there's a level zero, a level one, and a level two. So you would study the level. You can study level zero to help you prepare for level one and then study level one so you can do the credentialing for level one. And then obviously study the level two for the level two credentialing. Um, so that's, those are like the different components um, of the credentialing. This is, what is this? Oh, well, that's the sheet that the uh, that the language board fills out. Go back. Um, this, if you're doing level one, this little uh, checklist here just lets you know all the components of credentialing. Um, and this is for the Kiowa language portion. Um, you still need to complete the professional development portion which I'm gonna go over next. There's Miss Brenda. Okay, so for level one, um, you it says you can do this in any order, but this is just a reminder of what to do. So it's just what we just went over, all those different things. And the interview part, um, you can you know hopefully plan for the August in-person credentialing or make other arrangements uh, with Dane and the Kiowa Language Credentialing Board. Um, so 
that's handy. I think Dane said that they're working on a level two checklist, but I don't see it in here yet. So I'm guessing they're still working on it. Hi, Miss Brenda. Um, we are just reviewing the components of the Kiowa language credentialing process for level one and for level two. And we're just looking at the Google Drive right now, the um, credentialing study material Google Drive folder. Um, okay, so feel free to stop me with any questions. Uh, for those of you who are doing level one, in addition to these things that are here in this little checklist for the language portion, you also have to complete a professional development checklist. So what you'll do for level one, um, you would download this to your computer. It's a fillable PDF, so you would actually type in this information. And then you would go through and write, uh, put yes, no, or not applicable, initial each item. And then once you initial it, then you would uh, turn it in to the Kiowa language uh, department, to Lily Pinnell. And then they'll go in, the language program staff will go in and confirm that you've done all those things. And then they'll um, submit this to the Kiowa Language Credentialing Board. And then once the board members complete, you know, once you do all of the components for the language credentialing, then the board members will sign off and indicate what level um, of credential you're going to be issued based on what you've completed. So if you're doing level one for the first time, um, and you haven't done this checklist, then this is um, definitely something to get started. And I'm going to download it so that we can uh, talk through it. But um, so this is in addition to the language uh, components in that level one language checklist right here. So does that all make sense? Uh -huh. Okay. Um, so how to use this checklist, um, let me download it so that we can pull it up separately, because then you can see it as a PDF document. Okay, hopefully you can still see, can you see the checklist still? Uh. Okay. Uh, so you'll read through, you'll fill in, you know, your information here. You'll select the age group that you want to work with and the age group that you want to teach Kiowa to. Um, if you're going to do multiple age groups or maybe you're not sure, you can definitely select more than one. I think I selected like all of them <laughs> to just make sure I'm covered for any age group. Um, and then you're also going to select the credential type, whether you want to teach a community class or whether you're going to work in an Oklahoma public school. So like uh, for, you know, Riverside, Tim, you'd probably want to check both of those. Um, you don't have to pick just one. You can choose both if you think that will be applicable. Uh, but it just depends on where you want to teach the language. Um, so... The next thing is you're, you have a um, log sheet to complete um, to document uh, weekly Kiowa language learning, independent Kiowa language learning, and um, teacher candidate sessions. So for these things, um, you'll need to just confirm with the language program. Um, so a good idea is to keep track of your attendance um, for the sessions that you do. And contact the language program so that they can uh, let you know how, what the best way to confirm that information with them is. Um, and then you'll sign it. Then you're gonna need to develop uh, 10 lesson plans. Um, so you'll have 10 lesson plans. Um, you'll indicate the topic and the lesson plans, those will be included in your portfolio folder that you would submit with this information. So on the Google Drive, the language program will create a folder for each teacher candidate. And so you'll have a place where you can upload your lesson plans. Um, and then this is just to kind of show all the lesson plans and the topics that you're using. Um, oh, 
there's Alexan. Uh, so you'll put in those 10 lesson plans. If you've been participating in the KLCRP previously and in this past year of sessions, I would recommend counting all of those for your attendance um, and reach out to me individually if you'd like to verify any attendance. Um, I do track attendance and so I can go back in Zoom and verify. Um, so just let me know if you uh, need some support with that just for the past year. Prior to that, KLCRP, had, the Kiowa Language Department has all the records from KLCRP so they can verify how much you've attended and that type of thing. If you want to use your previous attendance to count towards the teacher candidate sessions. And I know pretty much all of you have been attending, <laughs> so uh, you have quite a bit of attendance to be able to show. Um, then there is a Kiowa language written proficiency assessment. This is a link that is provided from, you can get it from the Kiowa language department. Um, so they'll give you a link. It's a form, you just fill it out. Um, it'll have some questions in Kiowa, some questions in English. Um, do your best and get it filled out. Um, and you'll have to take it twice. Um, Many of you, I think all of you actually have submitted it, everyone on this call, um, at some point over the past seven years. So you can definitely uh, count that and reach out to the language program for help with, you know, finding the date of when you took those things. Um, and then um, if you've been participating in these sessions that um, your assigned elder mentor will have provided the language program and the language board with feedback on your use and pronunciation. So that's what this is. And then here's the big part um, is completing the professional development modules. So the rest of this checklist is pretty much walking through the professional development modules. So how you would use this is you could just go in order or you can go in whatever order you want. The goal is you got to complete all of them. Um, so the first module, you're going to click on the link to see the video. So I'm going to click on it so it'll open it up. You can see it. Um, so that is so that's the video recording. Um, for that first module. And then after you watch the video recording, so this one is 14, 15 minutes long. After you watch it, you'll have to complete a little survey to document that and to verify that you actually watched it. So you would click on this second link here in this box. And for the second link here, it'll take you to a little survey form. If, you're, if you have a Google email address, it'll automatically populate your Google information here, like, it, like you can see mine right there. Um, but if not, you would just enter your email, fill out your information. Um, you're gonna check yes or no whether you watched the video, you're gonna put the date that you watched it, and then you're gonna type a two to three sentence reflection on the video. So basically, how will you use this information from the training in your future instructional setting? You just type in whatever, two or three sentences, and then hit submit. And what this does is it'll go to the language program and they'll be able to verify um, whether or not you've completed that particular module. Um, and it continues for all of the other modules. So there's the first one is on um, the Kiowa Language Department Code of Conduct. Then the second one is developing a teacher portfolio. Um, so making sure that you um, understand what to include in your portfolio, which will include your lesson plans um, that you'll be submitting to the language program um, to verify you have all the professional development completed. Um, and the third one is Kiowa Pedagogy and Expectations for Teacher Candidates. This is from a teacher candidate orientation. Um, it includes um, what you know, the different age groups are and um, curriculum and instruction in Kiowa. Um, so you would watch the video, complete the survey. The fourth one is development of learning. So how children learn. Um, so you'll watch the video and then you'll complete the survey. 
fifth module is second language acquisition. Uh, basically, how people learn a second language. Um, so you'll click the link there, take the survey. Module six is the 10 Kiowa theme curriculum, the framework scope and sequence. This is a framework um, that incorporates Kiowa history and language um, into a progression of Kiowa themes. This was what was used with KLCRP. It's definitely not the only um, curriculum framework, but it is an option and it does give you a lot of ideas to work with um, for future uh, curricula that you might be developing for the language. Um, so you would watch the module and then take the survey. The seventh module is the basics of assessment. So talking specifically about language assessment. This will help you to know whether or not your students are actually uh, making progress in using the language in your classes. Um, so click on that link and take the survey. Eighth module is introduction to the sounds of Kiowa. Um, this is something that most of you have probably already had, at least everyone who's here today. Um, but this is just to verify that we, you know, we have heard the sounds of Kiowa before. Um, and we've practiced it. So watch the video. Let me see. I don't think I don't think these are very long. Well, this one's 40 minutes. <laughs> so um, you may want to just kind of uh, schedule yourself out some time um, to get these done. The ninth minute. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, that's automatically playing. Okay, uh, I keep losing my place in this checklist. Where were we? Module eight, Sounds of Kiowa. Module nine is classroom management strategies and lesson planning. So this will help you, um, especially if it's your first time being a teacher, um, this will help you really think about how you can manage the classroom, especially if you're working with high schoolers. It really, I mean, it's good for all ages of students, but, um, it also talks about how you would complete the lesson plan. So if you're curious about the lesson plans and you want to get started on that, I would recommend taking a look at this video first. Um, so click on the module, take the survey. And then finally, so those are all the modules. There's nine videos that you'll have to watch. The uh, next thing is to complete a written statement on your Kiowa philosophy of teaching and learning. So this is something that you as a teacher candidate um, would write that explains your approach to Kiowa language teaching and also your perspective towards Kiowa language learning. Um, this will give the language program and the language credentialing board members an idea of kind of what your philosophy of teaching is. And so here's what it looks like. Put your email your name, and a short paragraph. So, you know, something that I did was I typed it on like a separate document on a Google Doc or a Word document, and I just copied and pasted it in here. Um, so that's um, the written statement piece. And let me scroll down. And then finally, you can also include any supplemental materials that you want to. Um, include in your portfolio to submit uh, with this checklist. Um, the language program will create a Google folder for you in the Google Drive, um, so you can upload any of these additional items. Um, so you don't have to have just 10 lesson plans, you can have more than 10. Um, maybe you transcribe the sessions, the Kiowa language sessions that you participate in, uh, maybe you do your own recordings um, just to practice speaking and pronouncing, and so you can um, upload those. If you're already working with different Kiowa language speakers, you can do your own uh, transcriptions. Um, for some of you that attend the Sunday sessions um, on the Kiowa Culture Program recordings, the tape recordings, uh, you could even transcribe some of those recordings if, if you want to kind of just demonstrate that to the language board. Uh, you can also um, upload links to any videos that you've developed in the past um, around the language. 
Also any um, outreach materials. So if you've been involved in any community outreach um, previously, you could definitely include those. Um, like if you've done a PowerPoint or a story or a video or you know an activity, and then any other collaborative projects or anything else that you feel would demonstrate that you have proficiency and you're ready to teach um, Kiowa to your age group. Um, and so that is the professional development checklist. Um, anyone have any questions on that? Okay, and like I said, if you um, have a uh, level one, then you've already um, done that. If you are getting ready to do level one and you haven't yet done that part, I would recommend definitely get started on it. Um, it it's it is you know it does take some time and some planning and scheduling, um, but a lot of it you can do on your own on your own time. And then just kind of keep track of your progress using the checklist. And then when you're ready, um, submit it to the language program so that they can sign off on it, verify it, and then get it to the language board. Um, so, I got a qu question, Melody. Yeah. Do they have, is there a folder that shows everything that we submitted? Because I've submitted, you know, like all those modules and the and reading back that stuff. I don't, I'm just making sure that they know that I submitted it. So, um, that's a good question The so that might be something to ask uh the language program you could always um send an email uh to lily and just verify just say hey i'm working on my professional development checklist um i want to verify that you've received these things can you send me the google drive link um so i can finish uploading things something like that um not to put you on the spot, Ramon, I think, are you still, you're still with the language department, right? Oh. Is that accurate? Is that the best um, method or would you recommend something different? As far as contact or? Yeah, like how did they, like if they've already submitted some things previously, but they're, they didn't actually finish the credentialing process, um, what would you suggest that they do? Um, well, I would, I mean, I would assume you'll have updated a, some portion of your checklist, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I think, um, yeah, if you just contact any one of us, it could be Lily, um, could be me, could be uh, Faye uh, or Darlene, um, then we can see where, because um, I'm not sure if it's in the drive. Um, let me, let's see. So I pulled up the Kiowa um, Language Department webpage on the tribe's website. Um, right. And so over here to find the contact info, here's on the left hand side, you'll see all the emails. So you could probably just email this, the language at kiowatribe.org. Um, I think if you click on these, on their names, it'll show their email. So Lily's the director, and then you see Linda, Ramon, um, Faye, and then Lance. Let me see what happens when you click contact. Okay, so it takes you to this form. So you would just fill this out and then it'll send an email to them. Um, and, or you can send an email to this email, which is language at kiowatribe.org. Okay. So yeah, you might wanna verify that they have those. Um, let me see, I think. I don't know if there's still a folder in here, but I remember KL out of here. Revised folder. I don't know if I still have access. Um let's see language files. 
Um, teacher candidate, which one is it? This is. I was going to say, I know for sure we have it on file physically as far as what's been updated um, that y'all have sent in. Because, um, okay. you know, like, uh, like she said, you do have to uh, initial yourself and then we double check it. So as long as you sent in the paperwork that um, you've uh, initialed, then we should have it on file. So, yeah, you could either email language at kaiwachive.org or um, D. Sanders at kaiwachive.org. Okay, let me type it in the chat. Email language at kiowatribe.org or email you said d for darlene sanders i think let me hold on i'm about to double double check that okay yeah because the emails aren't on the website it's just that one the link okay it's d sankadota oh okay at kiowatribe.org yes Okay, can you is, can you verify those are accurate? What I put in the chat. Oh. Okay. Awesome. Oh. Uh, so these are the folders where you can put the lesson plans and the lesson plan materials. So every like the KLCRP has all of they had all of these and I'm assuming the language department staff still has access to this Google Drive um it's still showing up in my list so hopefully that means you guys still have it um I don't know if you've created a different folder system but like here's my name and then here's all my lessons that I submitted with the corresponding materials um when I did my level one credentialing last last year um so this was how i kept track of it and then i just did that checklist and emailed the checklist um to the language department staff once i completed it um you can see like I, i'm looking at everyone that's here in the call uh tim you have one you have a folder here um, there's nothing in it, but theoretically, there could be things in it <laughs> if you upload it. Um, Lori, I see your name here. There's your folder. There's nothing in it. Um, so you guys already have those, and I know that both of you are interested in level one. Um, let's see. So basically, everyone who was on KLCRP as a teacher candidate had a folder that you could use to upload your, um, the stuff for the checklist. Um, I don't, I'm looking for Miss Brenda's name. I don't see Brenda's name on here, but um, reach out to language at uh, kiowatribe.org to, um, you know, find out what folder you would need to upload your stuff to. All right, let's see. So let's see, Alice Ann is on here. There's Alice Ann's folder. Um, she's got some things in here. Um, and I see Courtney just joined. Um, there's Courtney's folder with her lesson plans and her portfolio here, um, where she put in all of the extra things that she wanted to submit with level one with that checklist. She created these folders and made sure that the language program uh, know, knew that that was there for them to look at. And here's all her lesson plans. Um, 
let's see who else is on here. Let's see, Kathy. Uh, Kathy, Kathy, where's your name? Here it is. There's Kathy. Um, so Kathy's got her lessons here. So I think everyone on here has their folders. I don't see Brenda's. Um, so Miss Brenda, if you want a folder, um, if you're going to do the checklist, um, reach out to the language program at those emails so that you can get one. Relationship. With Thank God. you. Awesome. Hi, Miss Marion. Welcome. Um, we are uh, just reviewing the credentialing process and looking at kind of um, for level one, the different uh, parts of the professional development checklist that teacher candidates have to complete to be able to get level one credentialed. Um, okay, so, and you can find that. So if you go to the shared with me and then, oh, I lost it again. It's called revised, KLCRP revised folder. And then I went to language files, teacher candidate completed lesson plans. And then there's where you see everyone's names and you can just find your name and to upload a document. So like, let's see, I wanted to add um, a document to, to my folder. Uh, maybe I wanna add something else for level two. You would just go to new file upload and then select the thing that you want to upload um, for your level, uh, for whatever you are working on. So like, let's say I wanted to upload um, a lesson that I'm working on. So I upload that and it'll tell you when it's complete and then it'll pop up here in the, um, in the folder. So you could, uh, there's lots of ways to organize it. So everyone should have a folder. And if you don't see your name, email the language program so that they can get you a folder and send you the link. Any questions so far? All right, let's see here. I think uh, someone's not muted. Um, okay, so did we want to look at study stacks? Okay. Um, let me find study stacks. Let's see, what was it that Dane said we should enter? Was it Iowa credentialing? No. Uh, oh, just enter his name, Pula. Okay, yeah. So I searched D Pula, but I thought he said there was another term that you can use that pulls up more, but I don't. Maybe if you enter Kiowa, let's see. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> Pulls up a whole bunch. Um, okay, so for the credentialing, we can, we can confirm with Dane next time he's on a session, but let's just use his name, D. Pula, um, because that will pull up the credentialing specific uh, study stacks. Um, okay, so we're not going to do the conversations right now because we just did all a lot of those uh, over the spring sessions. Um, but let's see, I know that we wanted to practice the family terms, the nouns, pronouns, and verbs. What else? I think those are the two big things that we wanted to practice. Um, so what would you all like to do for the next 30 minutes? Um, 
votes, suggestions, ideas. So we'll do level one of something. You can shout it out. Let's see, how about grammar? I was gonna say maybe one of the, this is Courtney, maybe one of the grammar ones, because that's what was, I think an area we all needed. Oh, yes. Yeah, so let's look for a level one. Um, so here is, okay, Kiowa, noun, pronoun, verb, start from the beginning. Uh, let's see. So this is level zero. Um, let's see. Level zero kind of gets us ready for level one. Let me see what the level one looks like. Where is it? That's level two. Plant nouns, level one. Maybe we should start with default nouns. <laughs> Those are like the more, uh, well, I don't know if they're common, but ones that we may have heard a lot of. So level one default nouns. Eventually we'll need to, you know, get through all of them, but let's look at this one. Okay, so remember Dane said, don't play this audio thing because it's gonna get it all wrong. So um, it will show you the English and then you'll need to say, say it in Kiowa. So, um, shoe I saw it is this. <laughs> so, let's see. So, they, yeah, bone. Um, let's see if we want to practice pronunciation of this. So, shoe I saw it. Shoe, so the English is going to be in the exact same word order that it is in Kiowa. So shoe will be the first word. Thole. Gya is going to be your pronoun. So from I um, to it. And then your verb here is going to be the end. Bon, like to see or you saw. Is this accurate or... I feel like this was changed. Anyone remember? <clears throat> I think he changed it from two shoes to one shoe. And was it, uh, is this the one that was using bon or thaba? Thaba. Okay, so then this one is not updated yet. <laughs> right? I just remember practicing bone. Maybe it is bone. I don't I don't remember, but um I'm trying to remember which one Dane said that he was trying to update. Uh, let me go, let me go back to the credentialing folder and look at that PowerPoint. I don't remember saying gya. That's, that's a good, that's a good point. <laughs> so let's, let's look here in the grammar portion. Let's look at level one grammar. Um, let's see. So 
we'll be given the English and we'll need to say it in Kiowa, but to practice, we can use the grit in Kiowa. So I guess let's look at the English one first and see what it says. Okay, so this is level one. That's the chart. So this is the default nouns. And then this is plant nouns. And this is animate nouns. And so that's what we would need to know for level one. Um, so, Is any of this ringing a bell? I remember this now because I struggled with it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> That's why I need practice on it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, so this is the chart that has our examples. And then this chart has everything filled in so that we can kind of see what the Kiowa translation is of each of those. Um, this is the examples with uh, just in English where we're supposed to say it in Kiowa. And it's got the audio of Kiowa. And then uh, these have the examples. And then to actually, this is what will be tested on, right? From the credentialing board. I think that's how it went last time, Grandma D if I'm remembering is we would basically the credentialing board would pick one of these and we'd have to say it correctly. Oh, okay. Um, I did a one-on-one -on -one with Dane by Zoom and we oh, did cool. all of these full charts, I think. So you went through each of these phrases here? Yeah, yes. And okay. I don't think I did very well. And then I think I studied and then I did it. I can't remember if I did it in person with the language board or not. I might've done both ways. Okay. Um, let's see. So this is the one that has, so this has it in written Kiowa. So, Alessandra, do you now do you remember the Gavon? <laughs> right, because it's in two places, isn't it? Yeah, because it's a, a different different pronoun chart. I saw it, and then he or she saw them both, or some something like that. And I it was the Gia was confusing me because it was used in two different places. I think. Is that right? Oh, yeah, because in the, uh, so let's see, I'm, I'm, let's go back to this one. In the little chart, the pronoun chart. Um, so here's two part sentences, mental sentences, three part and basic. So these, these are the uh, types of pronouns. Um, so two part pronouns, we have gya as the I to it. And you have ya as a she or he to them. Um, for mental, ya is, it means, for mental sentences, it means uh, yours, it is, ya. Except that the accent, the tone is going up on that one. And let's see. And then in the basic sentences, we see yeah again for they. So when you have several things or three or more, then you would use yeah. Um, On this yeah. one, if, if um, we have Andy, this yeah. is Courtney. Yeah, go ahead. You're cutting in and okay, out. Okay, I was just going to say that. Okay. On, on studying these is the way Kiowa grammar is with noun 
proverb and hearing the learning the verb of also what's uh, being said because then you will be able to so like gabon or um bon means to see it and then the da on uh then you're saying it's it is that or they are that so that kind of oh. helps helps too whenever you're studying them because that for hearing whatever's being asked because whenever he goes to or whenever whoever's um credentialing oh so basically look at the verb first and identify what type of verb that is whether it's basic or mental or two-part three-part and then that will give you a clue as far as what pronoun chart to use that would correspond to it. Oh. Okay. Um, so for level one, we'd need to practice these. So I'm just gonna test this out and let's look at the uh, study stack again. So we have this first one for default noun. It says, I think default is the same as basic. Is that right? Anyone who's done this? Pretty sure default means basic. Um, okay, let's go to study stats. So here it says, shoe you saw it. Oh wait, hold on, let me go back to the first one. Let's start over. Level one default nouns. Shoe, I saw it. Okay, so your verb is here. So you say, okay, what verb do I use to, to talk about to see something? So we said bon. And here in the PowerPoint, you have shoe, I see it. Why is it different? Okay, maybe it doesn't matter, but. <laughs> Uh, so I'm guessing that these flashcards correspond to this slide, to these phrases here for each of these PowerPoint slides. So there's your yeah and your noun, but you want to focus on the verb so you know what pronoun type to use. So you're talking about I to it. So you're using yeah, bong. Yeah, bong. Um, let's look at the next one. That's what we used, or I did on uh, YouTube. Uh, when we did Zoom, I did Zoom with the Dane, and all of it was the bong. bong. Okay. So, this, but you used, uh, did you use the study stack one or the uh, PowerPoint? Uh, the PowerPoint. Okay. So the PowerPoint, the way to kind of like for me, I'm like a visual person, so I have to hear it, but I also have to see it. So I like looking at the Kiowa written Kiowa here because it helps me remember it. So I always, you know, study both of these. So you have the English, so you have the translation, but then you have how you say it in Kiowa. So de ya bong. And there's your card. So let's say um, I didn't know it. Shoe, you saw it. Any any um, guesses on what this is? Okay. We're using the call. 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 Ah, bong. Ah, bong. And that would be the second phrase here on the PowerPoints. And so there it is in the written Kiowa version. Um, so let's let say, okay, we knew that one. Okay, she, she or he saw it. So it is Paul. Paul. 
And so when you see the little hashtag there, that just means that it's it's kind of just a placeholder to just let us know that there's actually no pronoun that corresponds. So it would be accurate to just say it like that. So they bump. And then here's your PowerPoint. So it's this third phrase here, this third line. Um, I know that's probably small to see. Okay, so let's say, all right, we knew that one. This shoe, mine, it is. Anyone remember? Okay, let's see. Uh, so let's see. This shoe, mine, it is. So they ain't dog. Uh, mine, it is. Is this a fourth bullet point here? So another thing that they said you could say is you see here in these parentheses, this one. So if you want to like, I guess, what is it? Grandma D calls it be flowery with your add extra words, be really wordy. You could say aim day, like for this one right here. Um, you could say that it is just kind of an add on to so, so you could say aim day, so day, aim doll, aim dong. Or you could say just so day, aim doll. Um, if you want to hear the pronunciations, so like I said, just download these two PowerPoints and download them as Microsoft uh, PowerPoint files, and then you can click on these buttons and play the sounds. So you can hear it and you can practice it. Because I'm probably not pronouncing them correctly. Um, so let's say, all right, I didn't know that one. This shoe, yours, it is. Let's see. Okay, I want to know what it is. So they get dog. And then we'll look here. So this is the second, or the actually the fifth bullet point. So they get dog. Yay, Courtney knew that one. This shoe, his or hers, it is. So they are dog. Um, so that's this sixth phrase here. Oh. Hyundai. Oh, I thought someone was commenting. Um, chew for me, you give it. So this is the, isn't this the a ah, uh, like where you're kind of demanding something from someone. Oh. Uh, oh. Let's, uh, Ah, oh, get back. Uh, so they ain't on. And so this one is this, uh, what is the seventh bullet down here? Second to the last one. So they ain't on. Okay. And yay, Courtney knew that one. Shoe it is. Anyone? Oh, there you go. Woohoo! Okay, oh, day. <laughs> oh, day, dong. So that's this last bullet point here. And then if you want to hear the pronunciation, you would download this as a PowerPoint and then click on that little button. All right, let's see. So we still have 16 cards remaining. Let's see. I think it continues to the, um, so, 
How these are organized is you have the first one here is just a singular. So it's just one, like literally one shoe, I think. And this one is two shoes. And this one is a whole bunch of shoes. So because our nouns and pronouns change based on how many of something you're talking about. So this that's how you get familiar with the different. We have a singular, a dual, and then more than more than two. So you have like three or more. Um, okay, so that's what these other uh, cards are for, is they're going to cover these other two slides here. So see all these phrases here for the two shoes and then the whole bunch of shoes. So let's see. So Ramon knew that one. Okay, shoes, I saw them too. Any, anyone? Feel like we need Jeopardy music. <laughs> okay, oh, so. Oh, waho. Dode nain bon. So nain. Um, so you're gonna go. We're on the second slide here for the default nouns. Um, let's go here and here it is right here. That's this first uh, bullet point up here. Whoops. All right. Yay! Remote knew that one. Okay, shoes, you saw them too. So they main bone. Oh. And that is the second bullet point here. Okay, shoes, he or she saw them too. Anyone got their pronoun charts out? Let's see. Dode a bone. And that's right here, the third bullet point. Conde and Psyche, though. Uh, Melody, um, it doesn't matter if it's see or saw on these. Like. Yeah, that's that's what I was kind of wondering because I noticed that's a difference because like the cards say saw, but like here the the uh, PowerPoint says see. Okay. Um, I we can ask uh, Grandma D and uh, Miss Marion. Does it matter or like? We, we're not changing the verb. We're still saying bon, right? For either we see it or saw it. So they don't differentiate between past tense and present tense in Kiowa? I thought we do because of the glossary. I want to look at the glossary really quick because I, but maybe, maybe we're just trying to keep it like really simple instead of making it complicated, which is might be why it's, there's a difference here. But I know in the glossary, if you're trying to conjugate a verb in the glossary, there's all the, you know, we have like a whole bunch of conjugations of verbs, like a bunch of uh, verb tenses, like there's the past the present, the continuous present, the future, the continuous future, the command, like there's all those forms of the verbs. Um, so I know we differentiate, but I'm just kind of curious. Um, so do de ne bon? Well, that's what the card says. So if we look here, it's, uh, what, which one are we at? Shoes, he or she saw them too. Oh, she oh. saw them. Yeah. So, uh, do de ain bom. Which is the third one. So, do de ain bom. So, de ain bom. Yeah. Melody, it might just be a typo because if you look at go back to the other screen and you look at where it says on the left 
it says he she or see he or she sees them so that saw might just be a typo yeah well that's a good uh that's a good point yeah i was kind of curious about that if uh we should be paying attention to it but maybe it doesn't matter for level one <laughs> i don't know maybe it's just going to get more complicated and this is just giving us like a baseline to work with which one are, <laughs> which one are we doing i'm just like totally confused now so are we the third one down after the, the, third, the third one down yeah oh day a bone that's this what i one. have and that i passed with i mean yeah whatever yeah oh day a bone and in the yeah. flashcard, it says the same thing, even though the verb is past tense here. But I was looking for the That's glossary. I, here. I have saw wrote down. Okay. So that okay. was on the PowerPoint also. Do, it, are these like the not updated PowerPoints? Are we looking at the wrong PowerPoint? Because see, it says C's here. Oh, that should have been saw as saw saw saw. <laughs> see, see, we're gonna <laughs> all the grammar gonna throw us for a loop. Um, that's okay though, because I need practice with this, so this is good. Um, well, seesaw is a child's game. <laughs> uh, let's see. I am looking in, I found the glossary, I opened it, it took it a minute, but I'm looking for the verb to see. Um, and let me share my screen. Uh, where is it? Oops, I think I went too far. Yeah, it's a regular B. Uh, just gotta find it in the glossary. Okay, here we go. Maybe. Okay, let me stop sharing this part and pull this other one up. Okay, so okay, so to see two part saw looked at and then we have this verb here. Um so the unconjugated verb is, is it bon bon, bon, bon. two part, this is like the non-conjugated verb. But if you're using it in a sentence, you have to conjugate it according to what you're talking about. So here in this, the noun, that this pronoun thing, uh, the English translation says, Shoes, he or she sees them. So, sees, see, it's not a command. So, bon is here for the past tense. Mm -hmm. Saw, looked at, saw after. And then we would have to make the verb, we would have to add this verb ending to make the verb either present or future tense. And then remember the negative tense, if we don't see it, then we would have to add, uh, what was it that Grandma Martha said? We have to always say han, uh, han, han, bon, bon, bon. Um, so when in doubt, look, for look up the verb in the glossary. And that kind of goes along with what Courtney suggested is start with the verb so that the if you look at the conjugation, even if it looks really super complicated, 
at least it tells you, okay, which verb are we looking at here in these cards that we have to memorize or we have to know. So according to this conjugation here, this should be the past tense um, or the command form, but we're not like telling someone to like look we're we're talking about something so this uh past tense would apply is what i'm thinking so if you're gonna say i see them you should be saying long oh and you have to put the uh pronoun in front of it right yeah which i'm guessing that that's like level three or love, maybe it's level two. I don't know, <laughs> but I know it's another level because level one is like just the bare minimum, the basic. Um, so, but if you really want to know why so we're the saying that, is wrong, that's what it looks like. It looks like <laughs> the PowerPoint is wrong. Um, I know that Dane said he was updating them, but I don't see, like, these are still the old versions, you know, that were in there from last year. So I don't know, maybe <laughs> he said he'll upload them at some point this summer, but I don't think he's finished them. So, but the study stacks is correct. So we'll use the study stacks. Okay, so we're at our time. <laughs> So I'm going to stop sharing. Um, so that was a fun grammar lesson. Now I know why we're saying bon and not bon ma or bon da. So let's see here. Um, okay, any, I know we didn't really like uh, do a whole lot of practicing. So we'll try to practice more next week. Um, but uh, any any questions or anything that you want me to kind of prepare for next time, I do have the email open that I'm getting ready to send the um, lessons that we did, the conversational lessons. So you guys all have them in one email. Um, so I'll send that. But uh, any anything else that you'd like to see or things you'd like to share. Okay, hearing none. Let's see here. Um, okay, well, I guess uh, we can go ahead and uh, wrap up. Um, I'm going to see if I got any other messages. Uh, how about, um, let's see, uh, Alison, are you able to uh, give our closing prayer? They don't say. I am looking for my closing prayer. I cannot find it. I think my dog ate it. Isn't that funny? Oh. <laughs> that's okay I'm so sorry I no, got to print it out so I can have it ready oh that's all good um let's see I don't know if Kathy if you're finished with yours um I am not I we need uh, to go over it to make sure I'm even doing it right <laughs> <laughs> okay well um if you want to bring it to a Sunday session we could do it on Sunday or we can uh, jump into a breakout room in one of our Wednesday sessions and take a look at it. So, uh, Lori, are you able to say that outside? So, um, uh, the Aho. 
have to All right. I've been traveling and I'm, I'm having like allergy problems and nasal congestion. I was in all that rain, so. Oh no. Well, I hope yeah. you feel better. Yeah. Oh, I'm all right. It's just, it just, I didn't get home till last night. So I'm just trying to get everything caught up now. Oh, awesome. Well, let me know if you have any questions and then um, hopefully you got the emails from the chat um, for the level one um, professional development. But uh, yeah, other than that, I will, uh, po you'll see the, the post for the recordings and then I'll get this email sent out with our, all of our resources on it. And other than that, we'll see uh, some of you Sunday and hopefully all of you next Wednesday. So, um,